Okay, that's good. That's good. Hi, Sarai. Good evening. Well, first of all, uh, my apologies for the last class that I couldn't come because I was sick. It was affected, well, my whole family was affected by this virus, this Omicron. So we are just getting over. Luckily, we are fine. Now we are just fine. But the last week was so, so terrible. So a terrible cough, fever. Oof, it was so complicated. That's why I couldn't be here with you the last week. All right. So what we know that... And we have to continue, right? So thanks to God, because I think God protects us not to be so hard. No? My children, for example, all my family was with this uh, virus. My children were, were with uh, some little symptoms. The most affected were uh, my wife and me. We had terrible cough, fever. Our body was so, <laughs> so weak. But well, so we have to continue. Well, uh, as you know, today we are going to finish with this uh, module related to teaching vocabulary. Yeah, so this is module nine. So we have just one more. <coughs> and as we have been doing all the classes, all the sessions, first we're going to start with a fast feedback in order to remember some things that we talked about the last session. No? Let's just start by uh, telling what is vocabulary. So we analyze, no, we analyze some aspects related to the vocabulary. So we saw some three aspects, no, the form, the meaning, no, and the use. So these are the three aspects that we need to know about the vocabulary, about words. No, remember the vocabulary refers to words. So the form, so we could divide it in three components, the spoken, the written, and the word parts. No? How do you pronounce it? What is the spelling? No? What is the composition of a word? No? This is the form. In the meaning, we have the four meaning, the concepts, references, and associations. So here we are going to analyze the concept, no? the definition of each word and in which context. No? Well, are we going to use the references? Are we going to use them? And finally, here they have the use. So we have three components again, the grammatical functions, collocations and constraints on use. No? The grammatical functions is <clears throat> here related to the patterns, no? the appearance of the word, no? the function of the word inside a sentence or a phrase or a clause. Collocations, so the combination of words. No? What words go with other words? No? So this is the collocations. And the constraints of use is where, when, and how often would expect people to meet this word, no? the frequency and the context of uses of each word. So notice all the knowledge, no? all the knowledge that we need to know related to a word. No? So we have three major categories. No? Remember the form, the meaning, and the use. No, this is similar to what we talked about grammar. No, in grammar, we also talked about these three aspects, no? The form, the meaning, and the use. So when we talked about vocabulary, it's almost the same. No, so we need to know all of this. Now, how can we identify words? Vocabulary, remember, is composed, it's consisted of many parts, many different words. No? We have the basic ones that are the single words, no? single words, like book, pen, boy, school, no? just single words. Then we have compound words, no? compound words, words combined to form new words, <coughs> record player, time saver, no? bus stop, 
So we're going to join, we're going to combine two words to make a new word, no, with just one meaning, no? Remember that we have here two units, and these two units has uh, just one meaning, all right? Then we have the multi-word units or lexical chunks, and uh, remember, lexical chunks, a group of words, no? So remember, chunks are a group of words. So lexical chunks, which are more or less fixed, here we have nobody way upside down out of the blue bits and pieces so we have these multi-word units or lexical chunks you know? we could say that we make some phrases you not know? some uh, simple basic phrases oh, okay thank you Janela. all right all right so here we have this and then we have the famous collocations or war partnerships, which are less fixed. No break a record, set a record, war record, formal education, formal letter. So we are going to combine these words. No, they are usually <coughs> they are usually together, right? They are usually together. So we call these collocations or war partnerships no so notice all the composition of vocabulary no from single words to group of words no we're going to join words no we're going to join two words to make just one meaning or maybe we're going to join two three four words together to give some a uh, general meaning no according to the contest oh we join some words not we group them no, because of their frequency. No, notice all the different aspects when we talked about vocabulary. So we could say that words have different functions. Huh? The same word can have a variety of forms. No, notice here a word can have different functions and different forms, all right? Functions, for example, the, a word can be a noun, could be an adjective, could be an adverb, you know? for example, the word like, like is a verb, and it's also an adverb, or the word uh, hand, hand is a noun, but it's also a verb, book, book is a noun, but it's also a verb. So notice this is a, uh, that he says, no, that words have different functions, different forms. Go, for example, the verbs have different forms. No, go, goes, going, went, gone. Notice how we change the form of the word. No, the root word is go, but we are going to change the form according to the grammatical aspect. No, here it depends on the grammatical aspect. No, goes, ah, third person singular. Went, ah, past simple. Gone, ah, past participle. Going, oh, the, past, the present participle or gerund. Notice, according to the, the grammatical function, we're going to change the form. That's why here it says that we have different functions and different forms. Words can be added to or combined to four new words. You know, the famous compound nouns or collocations. When words commonly occur with other words, words may look and or sound the same, but have quite different meanings. Here we have, they may look, so it means that you can write the same or you can pronounce the same two words, but they have quite different meanings, right? C, C, notice C, to watch, not to look. And C is the place when you go no? to the coast. So notice the pronunciation is the same, but the meaning is different. All right. Read, read, the verb, no, the verb. So here we have one is in the present, the other is in the past. No? So we write the same way, we pronounce differently. Oh, Lucy. Oh, yeah. So notice here, that's why he says the uh, words may look 
or sound the same, but have quite different meanings. Yeah? One word may have a variety of overlapping meanings. So one word could have different meanings according to the context you use it. You can change the meaning of one word according to the context you use it. Different words may share similar meanings or may have opposite meanings. The famous synonyms or antonyms. So notice all the different aspects that we could find in words. No? That's why here the title says words, a complex phenomenon. No? Because we analyze the words that so we could find different situations, no? different aspects to analyze words. Now, according to this, so we have different concepts. No? So we have word classes, word families, content words, function words, synonyms, antonyms, homonyms, polysemes, homophones, homographs, hyponyms, and superordinate terms, and lexical field. Oh, sorry. So notice all the different aspects. Now we are going to remember some of them. Word classes. Can you tell me what does it mean, word classes? Word classes, what does it refer to? What's the difference between word classes and word families? Can you tell me, can you tell me? Uh, teacher, word classes are relational of um, the, um, the function of the word. And the family is uh, depend of the meaning. For example, word classes are nouns, mm, verb, preposition, and families are mm, uh, <laughs> I yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, word classes are referring to the parts of a speech, you no, know, the different type of words, no, noun, verb, adjective, preposition, conjunctions, it is it. That's it. And the word families is related to the meaning. The meaning. Yeah. According to the root, we can exactly. have a group of words. According to the root, yeah. Exactly, that's it. Now, according to a root, we could find many different words, no? We have derivation, no? When we talked about morphology, this is called derivation or inflection, no? So we have a root word and then we add some parts and we create more words, no? For example, no, knowledge, knowledgeable, Unknown, known. Notice what is the root? No. But with this uh, root no, we can create more adding suffixes, prefixes, and we call this word families. Or we could add other units too, no? Other units or well known, no? So notice we are going to create this is called word families. Eh? Remember, word classes. Word families. That's it. And what about the other one? Content words and function words. What's the difference between these two group of words? Content words and function words. We have been talking about these two groups of words a lot, no? Content words, function words related to some grammatical aspect or lexical aspects of words. Aha, Diana in the chat, very good. Content words carry meaning, yes, that's it. A definition, a concept, no? Um, function words? Uh, the function word has a syntactic, uh, no, syntaxis, syntactic meaning. <laughs> yeah, a syntactical, yeah, syntactical aspect or grammatical aspect of words, no? These are the function words. They don't have a concept. They don't have a definition. They help, no, they help 
in order to connect words together, no? To have a sense. So this is the function words. In function words, we have prepositions, conjunctions, no? determinants, interjections. So we call this function words. On the other side, content words, we have four, no? Now verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. These are the content words. They have concept, definition. They carry meaning, as Diana says. Exactly, Diana. And function words help us connect the content words. Excellent. All right, that's good. What about the other term? Synonyms and antonyms. Uh, synonyms start with the same meaning, teacher, and Anthony with the opposite meaning. Yes, with the opposite. that's right. No? Synonyms are words which have similar meanings, no? quite similar meanings, and antonyms, opposite meanings. All right, that's good. What about these other ones? Homonyms, polysemes. Teacher homony uh, can have the same uh, writing or the same pronunci uh, pronunciation. Yeah, the pronunciation. Uh, yeah, and the polysems uh, is one word that had uh, different meanings. Uh huh. Yeah, you are right. That's good. Homonyms, remember, no, this is a very usual word related to, in order to make a comparison, a simile. So we have the, the names, no? There are some, some people who are called the same, no? For example, in my family, I have a lot of homonyms. My uncle is Jose Gatillon. My cousin is Jose Gatillon. I am Jose Gatillon. So we are homonyms. So homonyms are equal, no? Equal spelling, no? But different words, no different meanings. Here we find these two specifically, which are the homophones and the homographs. No? So we have this the homophones, words which are pronounced the same, but they are written differently. Homographs, so which words which are written the same, but <clears throat> they are pronounced differently. And polysemes are, Lucy says, words which could have different meanings, no? According to the context you use, you can change the meaning of the word. And what about the last two terms? Hyponyms and superordinary terms with lexical feel. What's the difference? Hyponyms. What are the hyponyms and superordinate terms? Uh, teacher, it's like the family word. For example, mm -hmm. uh, eponyms is uh, uh, no the hyper hyper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what yes. in the name. Yeah, it's uh, like an element of a big group. Uh -huh. yeah. For example, if you have colors, if, uh, hyponyms is uh, red, blue, um, black, uh, and other exactly. colors. Exactly. Yeah. So words, no, which belong to a. Remember, this is related to semantics, no? Semantic fields. We call this semantic groups. So a semantic categories, no? Calls is a semantic category, no? Because it refers to one meaning, no? A group of words referring to one meaning. Colors are blue, red, black, white. No? We call these hyponyms, no? And separated terms. And what about the lexical fields? A kind of similar, no? A kind of similar. No, no, no. Nobody, nobody. I'm going to give you an example. For example, uh, can you tell me words related to winter? A season, no? I choose this season, winter. Words which comes to your mind related to winter? Cold. 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 
Ajá. Ya. Sweater, jumper, ¿no? Gloves. Gloves. Ajá. Notice, and what's the difference with the first part, the hyponemes and superordinate terms? A lexical field, I, am, I give you an example of lexical field. So, again, lexical field is a group of words related to a topic. Remember, a subject. Maybe the words which belong to this kind of group are not related um, principally, but they have a connection with the topic. No, it's different with the semantic fields. No, In the semantic fields they have a close relationship. No colors. I have blue, red. All of them are colors, right? But when we talk about winter, and you have to tell me words related to winter, so we have clothes, maybe colors. Maybe some adjectives, no? Oh, yeah, winter. Oh, it's, it's uh, boring, no? It's an adjective. It's a feeling. Oh, yeah, winter. Ah, it's cold. Oh, yeah, weather. You're talking about weather. For example, weather is a semantic field. Semantic field. Weather. Ah, cold, hot, warm. This is hyponyms and superordinate terms. But the word cold could be in a lexical field related to winter. But cold could be with other, no, a winter, yeah, teacher, winter, yeah, snow, maybe, no, snow, gloves, a hat, a woolen hat. So notice the difference between these two, huh? hyponyms and superordinate terms and lexical fields, huh? semantic fields. The other one is lexical field, semantic words, which are closely related to the meaning of the uh, semantic category. But lexical field, words which has a connection, you know, have a connection related to a topic or a theme you know, or a subject. So don't forget about the difference between these two terms. Huh? So notice here all the aspects that we could find in words, you no? Know? All related to words, word classes, word families, content words, function words, synonyms, antonyms, homonyms, polysemes, homophones, homographs, hyponyms, and lexical field. So we have different, different aspects related to words. Then we talked about how we could learn no? vocabulary. No? So we have in our mind uh, something that is related to the mental lexicon. No? And we are going to use a kind of a storage to remember words, to learn words. One of these is the short term store that we use just for a few seconds. Then the working memory. So we use it to, to do some cognitive tasks, such as reasoning, learning, and understanding. No? And then finally, the long-term memory as a kind of filing system. No? So we keep the words in this long-term memory, and we are not going to forget so easily. No? So some strategies to develop memory are repetition, retrieval, spacing, pacing, use, cognitive depth, personal organizing, imagining, mnemonics, motivation, and attention. No? We talked about all about these strategies related to how to develop our memory in order to remember words no? for a longer time. No? Now, we are going to continue with the next part. How to present and teach vocabulary. This is so important. No? How to present and teach vocabulary. So in order to present and teach vocabulary, so we're going to analyze some aspects too. The first one is to build the contest. So what do we need to do here? In order to build the contest, so we need to add as much interest as possible in our students to create motivation, eh? to elicit. What's the meaning of elicit? Can you remember? Elicit. Mm. 
No, 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 nobody, nobody. Elicit. A synonym of illicit. Nobody, nobody. Illicit. Uh, teacher, good evening. Good evening. Uh, could be, could be a, a drawing, an image. Yeah. All right. All right. So you use some strategies and techniques, no, to elicit. But the question is, what does it mean, elicit? Elicit by itself. You use drawing speech just not to elicit. Yeah, Lucy says get something. Remember, elicit is similar to say to activate, no? To activate, to trigger, no? To trigger something, no? In order to activate some uh, background, no? Remember. This is the purpose, the reason, no? the beginning, to activate a prior knowledge. That's why he says build the context. So it's very important in this part to activate this prior knowledge. As your partner, Janela, says, so we could use different techniques. No? One of them, the most common, is using drawings, pictures, features, no? and so on, and photos. So notice here, the first aspect in order to present vocabulary is to add as much interest as possible to trigger, to activate this prior knowledge, or prior uh, mental lexicon of our students. Huh? Then we have to teach the form and meaning. So we can teach how words are pronounced, teach how words are written, and teach the meaning. So remember the three aspects, no? the three aspects of words, form, meaning, and use. So we need to teach our students the form and the meaning. Form is related to the spoken form or the written form, and also the meaning, the concept, the definition of each word. Then we need to check the understanding. Ask the students to use the word in sentence. Maybe you could use some concept questions. Then we need to practice the vocabulary. So we have here different kind of practice, controlled practice or freer practice. Now, controlled practice, when you're going to guide your students, no? you give some steps to follow and they need to complete them. Freer practice that they can use words in a creative way, no? But it doesn't mean that you're going to give them free and you don't do anything, no, no, no. So you need some guidance, but it's not so control, no? Not so control. Then we have the review. So you can review game at the beginning or recap at the end, and then test. You, you, uh, you here you have to make a feedback and retest if needed. So notice all the things that we need to do when we present and teach vocabulary. So first, we need to build a contest, creating interest and eliciting, activating, <clears throat> the mental lexicon of our students, then we need to teach them the form and the meaning, how we pronounce, how we write, and the meaning of words. Then we need to check understanding, eh? check understanding. So you could ask the students to use words in sentences or use some questions. Then you made him practice the vocabulary with controlled practice or freer practice. The review, you can review at the beginning or at the end. And finally, you test, you evaluate 
with a feedback or a retest if it is needed. So notice all these steps that we could follow when we present and teach vocabulary. Let's see here some tips. We are going to give them, or we are going to see three steps in order to present and teach vocabulary. Step one, presenting new words. Step two, helping students remember new words. And step three, making sure students made a new words their own. This is very important that they can insert these new words that they have learned or seen into their mental lexicon, not just for a short-term memory, no, for a long-term memory. This is very important to make it more personal. Remember when we talked about speaking and we call uh, this term appropriation. So they need to appropriate these, these words to insert them into their own mental lexicon. So here we have these three steps. Remember, first, present the new words. Second, help the students remember these new words. And the third step, make sure students that these words are internal. Huh? They appropriate these words. They make it personal. This is very important to remember. So notice these three, three steps. Uh, these three steps. Present, remember, and make it personal. Let's just start talking about the first one. The first step. Present new words. So in order to present new words, Janela was talking about it, so we can use some visual ads, no? pictures, uh, diagrams, no? and so on, no? using visual ads. Another thing that we can use is gestures and actions. And the other one, is guessing, predicting, and words in context. Also, you can show them some lexical relationships. And then we are going to see all the techniques. So notice here, the things that we're gonna do in order to present new words. We are going to use visual ads. We are going to guess or predict words. We're going to analyze words in context. We could use gestures and actions, and also we could show them some lexical relationships. So let's see, let's start. Use, using visual ads. Notice this is a very common classroom and you have here a lot of drawings, a lot of pictures, posters, or realia too, no? So we could use realia, pictures, masking, drawing, scales. So we use these visual aids to present vocabulary, all right? To present, remember, this is the first step, present vocabulary. So really, I remember real things, real objects you know, that we could use. Pictures is the most common, you know? pictures, diagrams, photos, masking, drawing, you can draw on the board, and scales. You know? We could use also scales. No? Here we have different things no? that we could use. For example, on this, uh, on the left side, we have some pictures no? related to fruits. No? Then we have animals, no? drawings, family, 
so we could use them. No, I know you use them. The other one is using gestures and actions. Here we have mime, gestures, facial expressions, actions. A very common uh, activity is this game, no? Charades. So we could play them within charades. You, know? you act and your students need to guess what the word is. You know? This is a very common game, no? a very common game to present vocabulary to your students. Also to review, you know? not just to present, to review some vocabulary too. No, using these actions, movements. No, this is very common related to the TPR, no? the total physical response. So your students move, act, not just watch the picture or look at the photo. No, no, no. They move, they act, they imitate something. No, that's why here's this mime. No, that's very important to do, no? to present the vocabulary. Showing lexical relations. Here we have synonyms, antonyms, collocations, prefixes, and suffixes. For example, here you have these words. We're using some cards. No? And you can show them some Lexical relationships, no happy, sad, generous, stingy, melt, freeze. So you use these synonyms or antonyms or collocation, also prefix for more advanced level students. So you use the prefixes and suffixes. No? Notice that you use also this game, the vocabulary spinner. No? So you can create it maybe physically or virtually, and you, uh, may, you, you, may, you, you may students participate. No? Maybe draw a picture, act it out, or sing any more antonym, spell it, use it in a sentence, define it. So notice that you could use this vocabulary spinner to practice or to present vocabulary to your students. But notice that we could use this as being not just to present, maybe to reinforce to, no? When we talked about define it, now here we have more lexical relations, you know, related to the meaning of words. No? So we could use this, yeah? notice these activities to present vocabulary, no? to present and teach vocabulary. Let's continue. Collocations. Here we have board raises. Teacher divides the whiteboard into one side has the word get and the other has the word have on it. Teacher gives a list of 20 words in a white paper such as married, lunch, drunk, breakfast. Both the students are given two markers and they have to go to the whiteboard and under a minute, one of them write as many words as he or she can use the collocation get and the other one as many as he or she can with the collocation have. So it's like a contest, no? That's why he has his raises, ball raises, no? So you divide a whiteboard, not the board in two. You, on the right side, get on the left side, have. And then you give them 20 words and they need to match, no? Which words go with get, which words go with have, like a contest, no? Like a contest. So you're practicing here collocations, no? Collocations. So we call this war raises, eh? war raises. Another one, choose your side. This is another activity. Choose your side. Teacher divides the classroom by tapping a line on the floor 
Once I belongs to the go category and the other one to the may category. So you divide the floor, notice not the board, the floor in two. One side to go, the other side to make. Students stand on the line as they wait for instructions. Teacher says a word such as the dishes. No, the teacher says this word, no? The dishes. Student move to the right spot, either make or go. The same dynamic is repeated with words such homework, exercises, and other. Okay? Notice this is another activity, another game. So they need to move. Notice that it's not just to give them worksheets and complete, no? Because most of the time we give them worksheets, no? To, to practice the collocation, yeah. A table, no? With two columns, yeah. So now you have too much. Write a words in each column according to the correct collocation, no? This is the, the simplest one and the easiest one and also it's fast, no? Here is like an activity, no? Like, an, like a game using the floor, no? So they, they're going to play and they need to move, no? The teacher says the teacher, so they have to go to one side to, to the line no? with go or make. So notice here you can use this activity, no? But as I told you a lot of times, it depends on the time and, and the number of students, too, no? So you cannot equate it, no? You cannot equate it. But I'd advise you to use it. No? I, I use this in class a lot. Principally at the first grades of secondary. They like playing, no? They like to move. And it's so, so funny. Another one, collocation mingle. Teacher prepares a set of confusing collocations such as fast car, fast train, quick recipe, quick decision, pay a visit, and pay a compliment. You will give part of the collocation to one student. For example, a student will be given the word fast, while another one is given the word train. Students have to stand up and approach others by asking what they have and make a connection if possible. Once everyone has a pair, students in pairs talk and make sentences with it. Again. It involves movement, no? So you give cards, you give parts of collocations, and they need to stand up and start watching. No, yeah, what's your word? Yeah, no, 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 no. This is not with my word. Yeah, and go to another student, go to another student to find, not to find the matching. Then maybe you can give them time, no? Because if you don't give time, it's going to be long. So you give time. Yeah, five minutes. Find your peers. And they start walking, no? running, going, asking. No? And find a pair. And then notice, then they need to use it. Notice this is the other one to make it personal. They need to use it. They need to make sentence with these collocations. No? This is very important, not just to recognize. Now they need to use it. So in order to do that, they need to know the meaning of this collocation no? to create a sentence, all right? So this is called collocation mingle. And this is another way to practice, to present vocabulary. Another one. Nowadays, we know that our students, teenagers, no, young people use this WhatsApp, no, also us. Fake WhatsApp conversations. Teacher introduces the topic by providing examples of collocation with win, beat, gain, and earn. No, this is an example. Teacher tells the students to install a fake chat conversation application. 
teachers ask them to me feed chat conversations using some of the collocations already introduced in step one. No? Learners can share the conversation with the rest of the classmates so they can have practical examples of the use of these collocations in context. No? So you can give them a framework, no? And they start creating a, a conversation using the, the collocations that you gave them. You know, for example, here, so, no, hello, Linda, hello, do you have a hundred dollars that I can borrow? Oh, I didn't earn any money. Earn money. Eh? Notice. Talk to Tony. He might have some. You know? Have money. Have some. Eh? Notice. They are practicing the collocations. You know? Using this real content, you know? but in a fake situation. You know? So notice you use this one to present or practice or reinforce the vocabulary. As I told you, here says that they need to install, but I think that you could give them on a piece of paper, no, a framework, no, a framework, and they start writing on this framework. Could be WhatsApp or Telegram. I don't know. No, we have a lot of a, a lot of chatting platforms. Another one that is very common to use, no, that is bingo. Teacher introduces the topic by providing examples of collocation with win, beat, gain, and earn. Teacher creates a bingo online. So nowadays we have a lot of web pages that you can create bingo cards no? using my free bingo cards website. No? You can use this. Teachers send a link with the bingo cards to students. Teacher mentions the name of the different collocations with go, do, and play. The student who has a full car wins. No? So this is virtually. You can do it virtually. Remember, free bingo cards website. This is the website. Eh? And they can create cards and they can play it. All right. They can play it. Also, they can print it. All right. So you could use this uh, technological device. No? If not, you can print a card no? and they start um, uh, writing the collocations no? that they have seen. No? As you can see here, no? go, play, and do. It's in mind that you have this no? very common collocations, go, play, and do. Go cycling, do yoga, play chess, do exercises, play soccer, play tennis, do squats, go fishing, go surfing. So you can give them the collocations or maybe you give a list of collocations and they choose, no? Yeah, we are going to play in this three by three square. Choose nine collocations from the list, maybe 20 collocations and they choose nine and you play it, no? You play with them, the collocations, all right? As I told you, you can print it or you can use it um, online, no? Online. You have the opportunity to have this. So you can do it online. If not, you can print it. Words in contest. So here we have dialects, role play, drama, stories, songs, rhymes and poems, videos. So here we have a dialect conversation. A poem, no, for example, with very, no, this is for little children, no, very. You need to practice with your students that were very. So, my different feelings I'm very much when I break a toy, I'm very sad when the fun ends, I'm very glad when I see my friends. This is a very short poem practicing the word very. Eh? On songs, you, know, you could use some songs, worksheets. You know? For example, here you have this. Yeah? Here you practice, for example, the past participle, no? because you're talking about the present perfect. So you're going to, to make your student practice the past participle. You know? How to make the past participle regular verbs or regular verbs. And you could use a song. No, You could use a song. 
all conversations, no? Make a bet, no? Do you want to make a bet? What kind of bet? And you use here some expressions, some collocations, no? Make a bet, pretty confident, instead of, or we win the bet, no? notice. So we uh, present here the words in context, not in isolation, no? not in isolation, in context. The other one is guessing and predicting. Try to guess the meaning of the underlying words. Now, this is a very common exercise that we could uh, make with our students. The children were bleeding all over the ground. No? And here we have more context no? to identify what is the meaning, no? to guess what is the meaning of the underlying words. A country girl was walking along the snare with a ruggle of milk over her head. So here we have, we ask our students to guess, no? to predict the meaning of words, no? according to the context, no? according to the sentence that they are going to read or watch this word inside. No? Other techniques, so we could use dictionaries, explain, describe, define the context, and the other one, translate. Here you have, for example, this diagram, no? in order to analyze, to describe a word. No? This is a picture dictionary for a square. Notice. Picture dictionary four squares. So we have a word. You have, they have to write a definition, then draw a picture using a sentence and list of synonyms. Notice. So they could use this diagram in order to reinforce the vocabulary, no? to practice the vocabulary. Yeah? And also this. No, dictionary skills. This is for more advanced learners, no, no, no for the elementary or basic. No? So we ask them to recognize the word, no? different aspects of words. No? For example, the word, the pronunciation, the part of a speech, the definition. So we show them how to use a dictionary to no better a word, no? In a dictionary, they could find a lot of information about a word. So we could teach them, no? We could find how to pronounce the word, what part of a speech it is, and what's the definition of the word, no? And then according to this example, so they are going to do something similar, no? And then they are going to find another word, to do again the same exercise. No? Notice this is a worship related to dictionary skills. Let's pass to the step two. Notice we finish with the step one no? to present, to teach vocabulary to our students. Now, the step two, help the students remember these words. So they can remember learning with friends, using memorizing games or activities, using review games. Eh? Oh, sorry. Notice these three aspects that we could make our students remember the words for a longer time. It's very important. And also notice, uh, it doesn't mean that the activities that we have seen before just to present, we could use these activities in some of these aspects too, no? In order to remember words. Using memorizing games and activities. 
So we have here given directions, picture dictation, matching words, searching words, sequencing words, eliminating words, classifying words, Here you have this matching. Uh, they need to match the words with pictures. Uh, so, oh, sorry. Or oh, picture dictation. So you can describe something and they are going to draw it. Sequencing words. Maybe when we talked about the frequency adverts, so you give a diagram in blank, no, in blank, and they need to make a sequence, no? What is first? Uh, yeah, always, then uh, the other one, usually, then, and finally, never. So they are going to make a sequence of words. They are going maybe to classify words, which words refers to weather, which words refers to seasons. So you can do these activities in order to May your students remember words, no? giving directions, searching words, and classifying words. Review games. Word search games. Picture labeling, crosswords, bingo again. Notice that we could use bingo to present, to help the students remember to dominoes, puzzles, charts or survey for their peers. For example, here you have for little children, label a pet. So they need to write a name no? of each animal, of each pet. Now, this is a very simple worship for children. Here you have the famous crosswords, no? the crossword, puzzles, word search, This is a word search puzzle. For example, this kind of material you can find a lot. No, there are a lot of web pages that you can find a lot of word search or crosswords or puzzles. Another one is using online survey. I don't know if you have heard about Mentimeter. Can be used to maximize the exposure of students to certain collocations. Here you have one example. What did you do last week? Now, this is like a poll, like a survey. Remember, Mentimeter is an online survey. So what did you do last week? And you have different options. No, I made an important decision. I made a contribution. I made a mistake. I made some progress, I made a phone call, I made a choice, I made an excuse. And the students are going to vote, no? Intimate is that they are going to vote. But notice that you're practicing and you're uh, helping your students to remember this collocation using this online survey. I said, oh yeah, okay, what did I do last week? Yeah, I made a mistake, eh? notice. I mean, oh, I made a phone call. Yeah, I made a phone call. Oh, no, I made an important decision. So you use this online platform in order to make service eh? immediately at the moment. No? And you can reinforce it. Or you are going to make your students to remember things, to remember words for a longer time. No? I don't know you have used before Mentimeter. Have you ever used a Mentimeter?
No, 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 nobody. All right, all right, don't worry. The next module is related to the ICT. I'm going to show you this kind of uh, technological uh, platforms to practice here. The one of the is Mintimity. It's very, very interesting. All right, so notice this is like a review game. No, this is like a review game by using a survey, an online survey. Learning with friends. This is another one. Practice words with a classmate or in a group. Teach a word to a member of the family or peer. Make and play word games with friends. Peer test. Oh. Oh, so here you can make your students practice together to test uh, themselves, no? This is very important, no? This is very important. As we have seen it before, no? All the activities that we have seen are related to work with uh, partners, not classmates. Not just give a worksheet related to vocabulary, they need to complete it, they need to label it. No, interaction. It's very important, the interaction. For example, when I, I remember when I uh, taught this course at the university, you know, it was um, English for specific purposes. When you teach this kind of courses, for example, you need to revise a lot of vocabulary related to this aspect, you know, business, technology, <clears throat> science, medicine. And I usually do this kind of activity you know, in pairs. What's the definition of, no? in order to remember no? uh, the meaning of some uh, words or phrases or lexical chunks? What's the meaning of, or maybe vice versa, no? uh, you give a phrase and the other students give the definition and something like that. So they interact. No? They are going to practice vocabulary in pairs or in groups. No? So, for example, I remember once that I prepared like a um, contest, no? It was like a contest. So I gave my students a group of words related to the topic that we have seen before. And they uh, need to choose some of them and ask their partners no? in groups, ask them, yeah, what's the meaning of this expression? And the students need to remember, oh, yeah, I remember that it was related to business. I remember that. The deadline, for example, no deadline. Ah, okay, or oh, back up, no back up. Oh, yeah, deadline. What's the meaning of deadline? Yeah, so they need to give the definition. If they couldn't give it, so the other group wins a point, no? scores a point, All right? Something like that, no, something like that. So you can practice this with friends, with partners. And also here, notice here says the family too, no? You can ask them to do this kind of way with their parents or maybe sister, brother, cousins. So. But if they want, no? if they want, all right? And um, peer tests, as I told you, no, they test each other, no? They test each other. What's the meaning of, or what's the definition of? Oh, could you give me the word for this definition? No, vice versa. You give the definition and they have to give you the word or the phrase or the collocation related to that definition. So you can practice a lot. No, you can practice a lot. Now, let's pass to the third step. Remember, the first step, present. Second step, may your students remember the words. And the last one is to make sure students make new words their own. So they are going to make the words personal. They are going to appropriate the words to use it. Availability. Remember, availability, appropriation, availability. So when they want to produce, they need to appropriate I made these words available to produce. This is very important. So, vocabulary record system.
personalizing new words. So we're going to use this too to create a system, a record system of vocabulary and personalize these new words that they have learned or seen. Let's see what we can do. Vocabulary record system. So we could use vocabulary books in an alphabetical order, by topic or situation, by grammatical groups, by color sets for children specifically, by story features. So we could use also a personal dictionary or word notebooks, marking word stress, adding pictures, putting an L1 translation if you want it, putting the word into context, adding a synonym, mapping a word family. So we could use this too. Yeah? We could use the vocabulary books or a personal dictionary or glossary. You know? Sometimes we ask our students to create their own glossary and also some books, no? Also some books and test books have at the end of the book a glossary per unit, no? Unit one, a glossary. Unit two, a glossary. So you can ask them you know, to maybe with this glossary so they could um, find more information about each word, no? Because sometimes students just get, oh, yeah, this is the translation, this is a feminine, and that's it, no? And that's it. So we can ask them to find out more, no? To find out more. So they could use notice vocabulary books or personal dictionary, no? For example, the vocabulary books are very, very interesting. It's, I advise you to use them you know, because in order to increase, to span your vocabulary. And a personal dictionary is your own glossary. You know? So you can uh, find information related to the pronunciation, the syllable, which syllable is stressed. Maybe you could add pictures. You know? If you want, you can translate it. But you could use the word in different sentences, in different contexts synonyms, antonyms, all going to the word family, no mapping a word family, the derivations, different derivations of words, no the root word, then you add prefixes, suffixes, you can create a lot of derivations. So when you do that, you are creating a vocabulary record system. Another one is um, keeping a learning log or blog. You know, nowadays, it's very common to create blogs. You know? so blogs, remember, is like a web page, but it's more personal. No? It's more personal. Keeping a diary or blog, again, virtually. Creative writing by using newly learned words or phrases. Notice this is very important. Creative writing, right? And they're going to use these words or phrases that they just learned. Looking for recently learned words in storybooks, the internet, the newspapers, and noticing how they are used. Now, this is very important too. No, this is very important too. Use nowadays this very common uh, technological device that is the internet, no? An internet, and then I'm going to show you web pages to, to practice, to reinforce vocabulary. We have a lot of tools on the internet to find this kind of information. For example, the first part, the pronunciation, the syllables, the antonyms, the uh, synonyms the derivation so we could find a lot of web pages to do that no also newspapers no online newspapers with stories or magazines so they could find a lot of this no they could find a lot for example there is a very common i remember that i show you when we talked about reading the reader's digest have you seen it yes or no 
in Spanish, no remember that I told you, no? in Spanish it's called selecciones, no? but in English it's read the digest. So on this magazine, this is an online magazine, you find obviously articles, no? articles related to different topics, no? health, fashion, education, culture, and so on. But also, it has some parts, some uh, links that you can find some exercises, no? new words for every day, no? or jokes. Uh, you can find some um, explanation of some collocations or idiomatic expressions. So you could use these tools, no? and you can um, give these tools to your students too, no? in order to use them. And they could notice by themselves how words are used. This is very important. Another one is self-test. So they can uh, solve some tests, some evaluations, some quizzes. Look for patterns in words. Plan and organize a vocabulary record-keeping system. Learn words in their preferred ways. Reflect on learning and reviewing regularly and monitor vocabulary learning. No? So here we have these kind of activities that they could do in order to make words more personal. Remember, so they can make their words their own. This is very important. When they do that, they are doing this metacognition no? because they are analyzing. Metacognition is to analyze, to revise, to check how they are learning, how they could remember words. This is very important to do. No? Notice here this. Uh, we have here a drawing. No? And you talk to your student, no, look, he's smiling. Now look at me. Now you ask them to look at you and you start smiling too. Look at me. I'm smiling. We smile when we are happy. What does it mean? Okay, notice in this example, can you tell me what techniques do we use to explain the word smile? Again, notice the situation. You come to your class, you say, look, my dear students, look at this picture. Look at this boy. He's smiling. Now look at me. You're not using translation. Notice. You are not translating because this is how your teacher's mind. Eh, sorry. No, you don't translate it. So notice, look, he's smiling. Now look at me. And you start smiling too. I'm smiling. We smile when we are happy. What does it mean? And your students are going to tell you, you know, the meaning of the word smile. So what techniques are we using? Can you tell me? What different techniques that we have seen before are we using? Tell me, tell me. We activate the thinking. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, but what technique? Look, he's smiling. So you show, you show the picture, no? So it means that you're using visual aids. This is the first one, no? Because you show this picture to your students. Look at my dear children. Look at this boy. He's smiling. So you're showing the picture. So you're using visual aids. Then look at me. So what are you using? 
Excellent, Floor. Gesture, facial expressions, because you ask your students to watch, to look at you. They are going to look at your face. Oh, the teacher, okay, teacher. Oh, the teacher is doing the same as the picture. He's smiling too. All right, I'm smiling. We smile when we are happy. What does it mean? What are you doing? We smile when we are happy. Anybody, anybody? Remember the other, you're asking a question, a concept question. What does it mean? Maybe you give a little description. No, you're describing the word. We smile when we are happy. Notice the different techniques that you use. This is a very short activity, right? It doesn't last more than two minutes, <laughs> two or three minutes. But notice that you are doing a lot of things here. So, first, picture on board. Interesting students remember. So, you are creating interest because they are going to look at the boy. Oh, look at the boy. All oh, right. So, you're using the visual X. Eh? Picture on board. Then, as you told me, facial expression. So gives meaning clearly because they are going to analyze. Oh, smiling. Mm, you have to move your lips. All right. Examples. Show how smiling is used as a verb. Eh? Notice you give examples because you show how smiling is used as a verb. We smile when we are happy. Eh? We smile. So you're giving that this word is a verb. At the end, you can translate it. No? At the end, maybe you can translate it to make sure. But it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Using the picture, using your facial expression, and using some examples, you can give the opportunity to your students to understand what the word means, no? What the word means. Exactly, Catherine. The background, no? Here we have this background. So, notice, this is a very simple activity. Eh? Notice, this is a very simple activity, but you are combining different techniques, no? As I told you before, I show you different techniques, different activities, how to present, how to remember, uh, how to make it personal. But it doesn't mean that you're going to use like a uh, process, no? First present, then remember, then no, you can combine them, no? You can combine in one simple step, one simple stage of your lesson, you can combine these different techniques to present, to remember, and to make this word more personal, no? For example, maybe you want made, uh, to make this word more personal, you can ask them, no? Now, describe your family. If they are smiling or not in a picture or photo, so you may, your student make this word more personal, all right? They are appropriating, no? They are appropriating the word into their mental lexicon. So this is very important to do, all right? So notice here the different techniques that we could use, different activities that we could use in order to present and teach vocabulary. Remember the three steps. Step one, what is the step one? Present the word. Uh-huh. Present. No? You present the vocabulary, no, the new vocabulary. Second step. Uh-huh. 
What is the second step? Guessing. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, guessing is part of the presentation. You know, they need to guess or predict. Remember, the first the step... Meaning of the meaning of the vocabulary? Yeah. So, present is the first. The second is remember, no? To can help your students remember words. Because maybe you present the vocabulary perfectly, but then they are going to forget it. So how can you make your students remember those words? This is the second. And finally, what is the third? Make, uh, use the word. Aha, uh -huh. all right. To make words personal, no? To make words their own, to use it, no? as you told us to use them, no? So remember, as I told you before, no? Appropriation, availability. These two aspects is very important, no? So you need to appropriate words to make these words available to use it. If you don't appropriate words, so you're not going to find words to talk, to speak, or to write, no? That's why sometimes we ask, teacher, I can understand but I cannot talk or write because you can recognize words, but you are not appropriating them. And it means that you, you don't have words to make or to be available to use them. That's why you cannot maybe to speak or write fluently. So you need these steps to appropriate. If you appropriate words, so you're going to make words available to use them, all right? And it happens also in your students. It's very important to remember that. Okay, now I'm going to show you here different web pages, uh, different web pages that you could use by your own or with your students to practice the reinforced vocabulary. Yeah? I'm going to change my screen just give me a second yeah can you watch it yes yeah for example this is for more um advanced learner students no to define to analyze words to find synonyms yeah, I'm going to put here the, the address. Just give me a second. This is one of them. Describing words. Yeah, describing words. It's here you have which noun do you want to describe. And you're going to have different words yeah, or adjectives or definitions. Yeah was related to the word theme. No, I wrote, for example, the word theme. And here it says, no, here are some adjectives for theme. You can get the definitions of these adjectives by clicking on them. You might also like some words related to theme here. So here you have more words. Eh? Well, estate, martial, fake, classical, seconds, body, name. So we have a lot. Notice. We have a lot. This is to expand, to increase your vocabulary. No, this is one of the pages that you could use. Eh? You could use, for example, let's write another word. Adjectives. Notice adjectives that you could use with the word woman. Attractive red hair, beautiful silver hair, perverse, rebellious, active, compassionate, Cheery, easy going, cold, criminal, perdered, Spanish, verily, willing, lovely, older. So you have a lot. Notice. We have a lot of vocabulary, a lot of adjectives to go with the word woman. All right? To go with the word woman. Okay? So notice describing words. That's why here the title is describing. 
So you're going to describe a woman. How can you describe a woman? All right. So you have to write nouns. That's why he says that you have to write nouns because you're going to describe the nouns. Another web page. The other one is this, Visu Words. Yeah, I'm gonna write this. Yeah, this is the other one. This is, as you can see here, a visual dictionary, visual thesaurus, an interactive lexicon. So here we have the lexical fields and semantic fields. Eh? A modern dictionary for a modern world. These words represents language visually. So you can explore the lexicon, whether you're a native English speaker or a second language user, either as a student or as a teacher, browse the language in which you're kidding with traditional printer reference material. All right. So notice here. You write here and look at the, the keywords here, the colors, noun, it's blue, noun, uh, green is verb, orange, adjective, and red, adverb. Let's uh, write, for example, a uh, subject. It's anywhere you can write here, anywhere. Yeah, subject, I notice subjugate, subject, subjugate, subject makes a Serbian forced to submit a subdued. So you have different adjectives. For example, here you have likely to be affected by something. The bone is subject to succession. He's the subject to feats of depression. You can give examples too. Here you have subject, topic, theme, synonyms. Here you can have synonyms. Eh? The subject matter of a conversation or discussion. Green as a verb, notice, remember the colors, the colors indicates the parts of a speech. So green is a verb, subject, subject, subject. Here you have, notice, you have as a visual, no? It's not like a normal dictionary that you read the definitions and the sentences. No, it's visual diagrams. This is the visual words, no? Visual words, remember, visual words. Another one. This one, this is very interesting, vocabulary.com. Here we have a lot of activities. You can sign in, or maybe you can practice without signing in, but I advise you to sign in because you can keep a record of your progress and so on, all right? So you have here activities. For example, you press learn, with interactive games. Here you have interactive games, challenge, a program. Here you have more activities. For example, notice here, find more activities. Vocabulary list. Notice here we have a lot of lists. We have uh, 12,554 curated lists. And you can practice with this with some activities. We have here by subject, literature, nonfiction, test book, curricular, test preparation, morphology and roots, historical documents, speeches, just for fun, news. Hmm? So you related to news. So you have a lot. I advise you this webpage is so, so, so interesting. All right. Let's see here the dictionary. Let's see. Let's write. Yeah. You have here the pronunciation. Knowledge. I don't know. You could hear it. Could you hear it? Yes, teacher. All right. 
And you have definitions. Then you have usage examples. Uh, in fiction, in our culture, news, business, sports, science, medicine, technology, <coughs> war, family. Then you have the editor choices. And also you have some courses to prepare for some international exams too. But if you want it, you, you need to pay it. But the other ones are free. Just the courses you need to pay. But the other activities are completely free. Yeah? So we have a lot to notice. We have a lot. Also, there's a games. Let me see it. Just give me a second. Um, the games. Um, Yeah, this is like a game, for example. Eh? Autonomous means, and you need to choose the correct one. Also, oh, you have points. Eh? Autonomous means standardizes, self governing, nonchalant, and gentle. Also, you have some tricks here 50 50, we're in the wild definition. You don't know exactly what it is, so you can see the definition. What in the wild is See examples of this word using context. If you are not so sure, for example, you can add this. No? Oh, yeah. So they are not omnipotent like the first class seated series. They lead almost autonomous leaves away from the prying eyes of the soldier. So you can identify or guess or predict the meaning of the word according to the sentence. Eh? And then you can check it. And notice here you have. A lot. You have a lot of activities on this web page. I advise you to sign in. Yeah, signing is free. As I told you, uh, they ask you to pay if you want to take a course. But if you don't want to take a course, so you can um, surf on the activities free. Yeah? You don't pay anything. All right. Let's pass to another one. Uh, the other one is this. The other one is related to the British Council. The British Council. As I told you before, because I showed you this page before, no? When, you, uh, when we talked about grammar, also you have the skills, online courses, business English, general English, and also the IELTS. So the vocabulary, notice you have with different levels. Beginner to pre intermediate, intermediate to upper intermediate, vocabulary games. So we have to choose the level to practice your vocabulary eh? from A1, A2, beginner to pre intermediate, intermediate to B1, B2, uh, vocabulary games. No? Also, you have other websites, no? learn English skills for children from age to 5 to 12. From 13 to 17, teaching for teachers and teachers educators. As I told you, this webpage, the British Council, is so, so, so helpful. And I'd advise you to use it. Let's see. One of them. Beginner to pre-intermediate. You can choose a vocabulary lessons, accessories, actions, appearance, bedrooms, body parts, clothes. Calls, daily routine, drinks, everyday objects, farm animals, food in Britain. And notice you have a lot. All right. Let's see one of them. It's charging. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, for example, you have these are interactive. So your students can interact here, no? so they need to match, no? match the words and pictures. Also, they could hear the pronunciation. Jeans. Jumper. Top. And they need to match. No? They drag to the picture. Doesn't want my... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Eh? Jeans and so on. Eh? So it's interactive. All right. It's interactive. Oh no, what's going on? 
This is the first activity. Then you have another one. Task one, vocabulary A1, A2, alphabetical order. Notice a glossary with but related to alphabetical order. Put the words in alphabetical order. Task two. Listen and put the letters in order. Remember, this is for beginning students. Task three. Complete the sentences with the words. Definitions. Notice, definitions. Task four. Tops or buttons. So they need to categorize, no? Categorization. Clothes we wear on the upper body, clothes we wear on the lower body. Semantic fields, no? Semantic fields, hyponyms. Top categories, upper categories. Task five. Complete the sentence. Write a word. And notice, a lesson could have many tasks, eh? several tasks, and they could do it. All right? So don't forget it. Yeah? BBC, I put it, yes. No? BBC Learning English. This is a British Council. A British Council. Yeah? This is Learn English. And you could have related to the skills, grammar, vocabulary, business, general English, and also this uh, famous international examination, the IELTS. Now, another one. Let's see. Um, yeah, this one. This one is Word Hippo. This is the name of the web page. Word Hippo. Yeah. I put it in the chat. So this is like a thesaurus. And this is like a thesaurus. And you can find synonyms, antonyms, definitions, rhymes, sentences, translations, fine words, word forms, pronunciations. Notice all the information that you can find in a word. Let's see. Make. Notice a very simple word. You have the pronunciation. What is another word for make? What is the opposite of make? Sentences with the word make. Words that rhyme with make. What is the adjective for make? What is the noun for make? Okay. So you have a lot. So you can click here on synonyms. What is another word for make? Build, form, construct, cook, cap, create, assemble, compose, craft, fabricate. So you have a lot. Antonyms. Opposite of to create a form, something, destroy, break, demolish, dismantle, crash, ruin. So notice. Definitions. Here you have what does make mean. Verb is transitive to create, to build, to write, to bring to constitute, to cause, to force, to do. Notice all the different definitions of the word make. Rhymes. Steak, take, shake, break, fake, flake, cake. Notice you have a lot of information related to words. Word hippo. Remember, uh, word hippo. Now, let's pass to another one. This is English Club. Last session, I show you this web page too. And I told you that it has a lot of a lot of elements here on this web page. As you can see, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, listen, speak, read, write, guess, seven secrets, it quiz me. We have a lot. Let's see. English vocabulary. What is vocabulary? Ask questions about vocabulary, vocabulary quizzes, vocabulary games, word of the day, vocabulary list, 
common words, phrasal verbs, irregular verbs. We have a lot of topic vocabulary, lexical fields, non food, sports, music, movies, numbers, time, vocabulary references. Here we have lots of useful English words and phrases, including slang, slang quizzes, idioms, synonyms, collocation, confusing. Vocabulary by class and form, word classes, notice parts of the speech, verb, noun, adjective, other word forms. Notice we have a lot. Also, we have all the web pages that you can find more um, activities related to practice, reinforce, or learn vocabulary. All right. So we have a lot. This uh, is very, very helpful too. Also notice here on the left, you have the top 10 English club. So we have the phrasal verb list. This is very, very interesting. Also, you have the PDF. So you can download it and print it. You know, this is like a list, all right, that you could use with the phrasal verbs. This is the English club, remember? English club. Let me show you another one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, this is the other one. Languageguide.org, English vocabulary. So here we have by topics, you know, the alphabet, writing, numbers, the body clothing, food, animals, nature, the house, miscellaneous, so transportation. For example, let's see the body. The little finger, the wrist. Notice that this is interactive too. Head, head, neck, arm, the, the armpit, wrist, elbow, chest. Hip, abdomen, stomach, belly, tummy. And notice, here you have in a formal and informal. Elbow. The, the, okay, little fi thumb. The fingers. Uh, thumb. Index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. Little finger. Palm. Palm. Shoulder. Uh, also, knuckle. Here you have a speaking challenge, a listening elbow. challenge. Elbow. So you need to march towards the elbow, no? You elbow. play it. You can show the spelling. Elbow. And toes. You to know it. Toes. Toes. And you have here a lot, no? The body. Another one, notice, uh, let's see, transportation is similar. The house, no? it's very common here, the house. House. <coughs> Roof. Shingle. Tile. Chimney. Shutter. House. 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 Oh, my internet. <laughs> Hall. Uh, hallway. hallway. Room. Wall. Ceiling. Eh? No, floor. Just, so this is like um, the diagrams, the pictures, but in an interactive way, no? So you can show it to your students and they can watch them, listen, and so on, no? House. Yeah. This is the language guy, remember? And also it has some activities, no? Listening and speaking activity. Yeah, the language guide.org. And this is related to English vocabulary. All right. And let's finish with another one. Uh, let me see. Where is it? Yeah. Here it is. Reallylearnenglish.com. Again, this web page has a lot of elements, a lot of tools. But we are going to go to the vocabulary activities. No? Here you have uh, downloads, videos, speaking and pronunciation, reading, writing. And here it is, vocabulary. So what is vocabulary? What is vocabulary important? How can this site help 
Notice here you have a brief explanation how can you use these web pages. So you could use reading boiled vocabulary and some common mistakes. You can use the vocabulary flashcards, do the vocabulary exercises and read the English short stories. Also, you can watch videos in the Learn English video section, the English reading practice, do the vocabulary quizzes, free vocabulary worksheets, and also you can improve your English grammar and some really good dictionary. Also, you have vocabulary lessons. Find out about teacher games for vocabulary, synonyms, antonyms, English vocabulary, word list, vocabulary articles. So we have a lot again here, right? We have a lot of things. Here you can find the vocabulary games, yeah, vocabulary games for the classroom, five minute activities, a resource book for short activities. So here you have some books or some excerpts of books. So daily word letters. Notice we have a lot. All right. We have a lot of things for you as teachers and also for you as students. All right. Also for you as students, there was once, I think I closed it. Just give me a second. Uh, where is it? No. Just give me a second. It's the, from the BBC Learning English. I'm going to show you this to finish. Here it is. Yeah, the BBC Learning English, remember, is, it has a lot of things, again, a lot of things that you can practice, reinforce as teachers, as students. And also here you have the vocabulary section. English in a minute, intermediate plus, six minute in English, intermediate plus, the English we speak intermediate, six minute vocabulary basic, for example. Here this one, let's go to this one. This is vocabulary, suffixes, adjectives, and adverbs. For example, let's see here. Adjectives and adverbs. Now here we have a video, an audio. Yeah. Also, you have the transcript. You can download, notice, you can download this and you can watch it or listen in offline, not online. So this is very good for you. No? So here we have this with videos. Also here you have videos teaching you the vocabulary of English. All right. Well, I think that's all about the web pages. I hope that you can use them as I told you before. Internet, well, internet is great for teaching, for learning, for practicing. So try to use it the most. It's very important. You can find a lot of web pages. And the pages that I show you are free. Just the one, the vocabulary.com, you want to teach some courses, you can pay it. But if you don't want, you don't pay it. <laughs> so, but the other ones are completely free. You don't need to pay anything. Most of them, you don't need to register or sign in. Some of them, if you want to watch more, more activities, you can sign in, but it depends on you. So I advise you to use them a lot, all right? Use them a lot. Well, that's all for today. The time, oh yeah, the time. So try to take care of yourself. See you next week. Next week, remember, next session is related to the ICT, the technological aspect of teaching the language. So here we're going to reinforce all these different web pages that we have seen it before. So we're going to reinforce it. And also I'm going to talk about some platforms too, how to create, to um, um, analyze the web pages and maybe use some platforms to teach, no? to teach the language. Well, see you 
next class take care a lot bye 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 teacher thanks a lot bye teacher bye teacher thank you see you next bye bye see you next class see you next session